training program is going to help uh, facilitate the shortage in, in, in skills and, and bridge the gap, uh, filling the void that we have in Trinidad. As you may be aware, shipyard requires highly skilled uh, workforce and we are lacking in many ways. This is one of the reasons why it was so important to do pre-employment screening prior to the start of the project so that we can gauge where we are in terms of manpower and what is needed. Uh, the training program will come in to bridge that gap. We are going to be able to bring uh, semi-skilled people up to the level. Uh, those who wish to acquire new skills may do so. And those who wish to become multi-skilled may also do so. So we look forward to that rolling out. We are attempting to offer training in strategic location to ease the burden of travel uh, long distance uh, to acquire these skills. So we're looking at North, Central, and South. Uh, particularly, we want the library people to benefit. So we want to do one in the library area. But we've engaged not just the government, but even our, uh, our private business stakeholders uh, and we are working on facilities to offer that training and uh, we're nearing some decisions at this point. In the same vein as uh, getting ahead of the curve and, and hitting the ground running, um, we have embarked on registration and inspection of, of privately owned vehicles uh, within the transportation industry. Uh, we have discovered that uh, persons from all areas of the country are interested in, in, in becoming employed uh, during the construction phase. And as such, uh, we want to employ these private uh, taxis and private vehicle owners uh, to transport workers from those locations to other strategic locations and eventually to the, the library shipyard where they will be working and, and on the way back home. There's a host of benefits for the library people to the shipyard. Uh, employment is the easiest one, of course. And, uh, you know, the acqu acquisition of skills uh, for the library people, especially the youth, um, the development of the library community, because we, we are engaging stakeholders as well in developing library and environs so that when the crew of these vessels come into our port, uh, they don't have to just, you know, take a taxi and go to Port of Spain or elsewhere. Um, it will have places in library that they can enjoy, uh, as well as the local community from the wider Trinidad area can come and uh, in, in enjoy library and some of the facilities. So we are looking at how we can assist in the development of those areas. Uh, just simply, the library people uh, who own property in that area, the property value will go up. That's an enormous benefit to the people in library. And if they use it wisely and leverage it well, you know, they can be part of uh, the economy of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, there's a nominal registration fee of $200 that uh, helps underwrite the expense of acquiring your work ID and the process of the administrative course. Uh, it's quite nominal and it's understandable in the industry uh, post 911 uh, in the United States when uh, immediately in the aftermath of uh, the 911 disaster, uh, that ID to work on the port or the airport was like 175 US dollars that I paid for mine. Uh, uh, it's a small amount uh, compared to the cost. I think the US cost now is uh, approximately 250. Uh, so we're still way less than them. In terms of the, 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 the skills that we're going to teach, 
Oh, there are so many. We uh, have the capability to teach uh, more than 130 different skill sets. However, uh, what we are focusing on are two things. The needs of the shipyard as well as uh, the needs of the people. Uh, we are going to be serving you shortly uh, via email to ascertain the areas that interest you uh, so that we can offer those areas. But it's also going to be in tandem with what is needed at the shipyard. So we're going to be doing the best of both worlds. We want to satisfy uh, the people and we want to satisfy the need of the shipyard project as well. A few are doubtful and there are some mischief makers speaking negatively about this project. But I remain excited about it, I am convinced. I, you know, I applied like everyone else did uh, back in August or so and I was immediately hired uh, because of my skill set. Uh, on a construction project, especially one of this magnitude, we must remember that people are going to be employed in stages. Uh, my skill sets allow me to be on board at this time. However, let's say you are a roofer or a painter. This wouldn't be the time you would be called. So as the project ramps up in its intensity, so too will you be called. So I will appeal to their sense of patience and ask them, you know, to have some patience. I know it's tough uh, due to the pandemic and uh, globally uh, we're in our economic downturn because of it. But uh, I, I see this happening soon and I look forward to it. I think we're going to be a part of something very special. And in addition to working and, and being able to support our family or yourself, uh, to be a part of something this great for such a lovely country uh, is like the icing on the cake for me. I have been asked quite a bit about the course. Now, the course of this would vary. Uh, and, I, and I want you to understand that, for example, there are some courses that require material more than others. So, you know, we have to get plates for the welders to weld. We have to get, you know, the gadgets, the, the switches, the, the circuits, the, the wiring for the electrician, the tubing that they're going to bend. The so various craft require different things. So it depends on, on which craft you are interested in. Uh, the price is going to vary. However, um, you know, textbooks are available. Um, we're going to work out, you know, something to provide textbooks for you guys. And uh, we're going to try to do it as, as, as low cost as possible. And, um, you know, this program, I assure you, you're going to enjoy. It's going to be very beneficial. And uh, it's going to be accepted widely, uh, more than 128 countries worldwide accept the credentials from this program. It's stored in a database. Your certificates come from the United States and uh, it comes with a, a wallet card and, and employers, especially the US based employers, are going to look at you differently and uh, you're going to be a favorable hire. Uh, someone with the same skill that doesn't have your certification, uh, you will get the nod and perhaps even higher paid. All the major companies in America, the Bechtel, the Kellogg's Brown and Root, uh, J. Merritt, uh, the largest construction companies, they all accept it. In fact, um, they funded the program in its, in its, in its in, Exception, uh, uh, they pooled the money to develop it. They just wanted to, to standardize uh, the curriculum and the jargon in the industry after recognizing that they all pool uh, employees from the same source. And uh, 
you know, you want everybody to re refer to things by the same name and, and have a similar procedure in which they operate. And uh, that has worked well. There are several reasons why SRDC needs to pre-register people at this time. And, and uh, it gives us an insight of the available manpower and the skill levels. Uh, it also tells us where there's a gap that needs to be filled. That's going to work hand in hand with us determining uh, the training that's needed. Uh, what we are hopeful for, and I'm proud to be a part of an organization as F SRDC who are determined to make this project uh, be supplied with local labor as much as possible rather than foreign workers. Uh, I'm proud of that. I subscribe to that wholeheartedly. And it gives us an opportunity to determine what the manpower request would be and what the shortages are. And it gives us the ability in short order to train those who can come up, you know, with, with some experience rather quickly, as well as to provide for the younger ones uh, who will have a future in this because the shipyard is going to be here to stay. The rates of pay, a lot of persons have been asking about that, but I'm going to say this, it's, it varies. Um, if we hire a nurse, her pay is going to be different from, you know, that of a welder or a plumber or a painter. So your rate would be determined by your skill set and your experience. It's also going to be determined by who you work for, a foreign contractor versus a local contractor or even contractor A versus contractor B. Uh, we expect that you know, your wages are going to be competitive. So more than likely, you would be uh, at the higher end of the pay scale in those crafts, in competitive uh, industries. Uh, we don't have a concrete start date. I couldn't tell you, well, March 25th. Uh, what I can say is uh, confidential negotiations, for lack of a better word, or meetings with uh, my superiors and the investors are ongoing. And uh, when married to the government's initiative on this project, and uh, I think the pandemic has a part to play, when all those factors are ironed out, I can see a, a start to this project. And, uh, with the increased amount of meetings I see with, with, with my high ups, I am encouraged uh, to believe that it's in the near future, very near future. Guyanese and, and, and Suriname has become major players in the oil and gas sector uh, in recent times. And that is so beneficial to us because of the maritime constraints, the bottleneck that they have, getting stuff in and out of there, uh, they are going to be reliant on us as the nearest destination for some of the larger vessels. And that is going to sweeten the pot a little bit uh, in Lehman's tomb. Uh, that brings added revenue much more so than what the LNG uh, tankers that they, the developers were initially looking at uh, that made this project viable. Uh, the Guyana and Suriname experience uh, brings more viability to this project. So, uh, you know, we're happy for the Guyanese people, the Surinamese people, and, uh, you know, we're happy to help them out in that regard as well because of our a natural resource and a natural shipping channel, etc. This project is not new. It's been on the agenda for approximately 12 years. 
from the embryonic stages to the pre-construction phase, which we know Mr. DeGan has been assiduously at the wheel and, 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 and focus. And, you know, I'm proud and I'm happy for him to see that this is about to bear fruit and that Trinidad and Tobago and, you know, many people in its population are going to benefit. Uh, on the lower end, in the construction phase, we are talking about 3,500 persons. That is 3,500 families that are going to be benefiting. And when those persons uh, earn a, a good income, a sustainable income, they then purchase from other people, and that spreads out in the com community uh, versus you know, someone coming in here and bringing in their staff and, and shipping all that revenue out of the country. Uh, you know, I'm proud that that is his vision and he's working assiduously on it. Uh, like I said, to support an initiative like this, you know, I'm elated. KSRDC is the developer of the Langway Shipyard Project. Uh, the brainchild of SRDC um, is the Labre Shipyard Project. And I like to refer to it as the, the Labre Marine City. Uh, I don't know if they would take my advice and call it that. However, um, you know, it's going to brighten up that area immensely. Uh, and, and the folks of Labre uh, are going to have to supply a lot uh, for the staff during the construction phase as well as the operational phases. Uh, so for the next 100 years, uh, expect to see the library people supplying the demand for goods and service of that shipyard. And, you know, it, 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 it's at the beginning, it's only going to grow and, 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 and be more viable. And, you know, I'm proud. I'm really proud. Uh, I wasn't born in a library, but my roots, my, my mom was. And uh, so were her siblings. So, uh, you know, uh, I am proud to see that, you know, the son of a, a woman from Chinese village, uh, you know, after living abroad for so many years, coming back to, to, to build that area with, with my very hands and, and, and what little intellect I have, uh, I'm so thankful for the opportunity.